thank you for that um, very kind introduction. I hope I, I can um, live up to it. Um, so I'm Maria, I work at Pitch, um, and I'm here today to talk to you about self-hosted closure script and how to bootstrap a compiler. Um, my intention behind this talk is to um, encourage people to not be afraid of compilers. Um, I am by no means an expert on compilers. Um, it's all stuff that I've learned and I'm pretty sure you can learn it too. Um, so yeah, let's get right into it. So we'll be talking about the what, how and why. So what is a self-compiling compiler and what does it mean to bootstrap a compiler? How does it work? So how does bootstrapping work? And how was it done in um, for ClojureScript in particular? And then we we'll also be looking at the why. So why do you want to have a self-compiling compiler in the first place? Let's start with the what. Um, these are a pair of boots. Um, they're not my boots, um, but they have a bootstrap at the top. And there's a saying that goes back to the 19th century that um, goes to lift yourself up by your own bootstrap. And that saying was used to describe a very impossible task. Um, because even if I try really, really hard, I just can't, I can't do it. I can't lift myself up by my own bootstraps. Um, in terms of computers, uh, bootstrapping, the term is often used to describe um, a self-starting self process that can proceed without any external input. And in terms of compilers, um, compiler bootstrapping is the technique for producing a self-compiling compiler, so that is a compiler written in the source programming language that it intends to compile. So that's quite a mouthful, compiling and compilers and compiling mm -hmm. itself. Um, so let's try to take this apart. And for this, I'll be using T-diagrams, which is short for tombstone diagram, um, or also just because it looks like a T. Um, these diagrams are often used um, to describe compilers or any language processing program. And they're quite um, straightforward. So at the top, uh, at the bottom, at the bottom you denote it with the X, um, um, is the language the compiler is written in. Then to the left you have the input language, so the language the compiler accepts. And to the right is the output language, so the language the compiler produces. If we look at our um, definition again, so it's the same one that we've seen two slides ago, um, and focusing on the highlighted part, so a compiler written in the source programming language that it tends to compile and try to translate this to our T diagram, it would so look something like this. So X is the language that the compiler is written in, but then X is also the language that it accepts. But how, like how does it work if we start out writing a compiler for X, but we don't really have an executable yet. How do we get there? So this is where uh, bootstrapping comes into play. So what we do instead of writing our first version in X, we write it in a different language. So an intermediary, um, in this case, um, Y. And Y already has an existing compiler. So what we do is, yeah, we write our compiler for X in language Y, and now have a program or a compiler that takes any program written in X. And if you think of it, a compiler is also just a program, right? So can we not just rewrite our compiler in X and then pass it to our compiler in Y? And this is what we can do. So um, you can see here, we uh, have our um, version written in Y, and then we rewrite this one in X, pass it to the compiler in Y, and we get our first version, um, our fir first self-hosted version, which we then can use to iterate on. So whenever we want to improve our compiler code, we can um, pass the code to the first version to get v2, and then we use v2 to get v3, and so on and so forth. 
So this is the theory. Um, let's try to do this um, with our own small language, um, which I'm calling Lozier. It's um, a little bit more lispy than Clojure. Um, basically, it's the same as Clojure, but instead of using defn to define a function, it's using defun, um, which is used in common list to define a function. And so for the first version, basically to bootstrap, so my goal is to have it self-hosted, to have it self-hosted. Um, so to bootstrap the compiler, I'm writing my first version for Lozure and Clojure, and it's taking a Lozure file as input, um, compiling it to Clojure, basically. And this is, this is it. So this is the small compiler. As you can see, it's not uh, written in Clojure script, but it's just a small Clojure script. Um, and at the bottom, you can see it takes two arguments, um, the first one being the Lozier input file, and the second one being the uh, output file that we want to write our closure, um, compile closure to. And then we open up a reader to read the Lozier file um, and another writer for the out file, by bind the out stream to that file, and then read in the expressions of that file until we reach the end. And what we do is we can um, check um, if the first item in that expression is um, defun. And if that's the case, we just replace it with defn. And please note, this is very, very similar to um, uh, macros. That you could do this with a macro as well. Um, people often say that with macros, you can you also define basically your own language. But for the sake of this example, I've, used, um, I've, I've done it this way. So let's try it out. So here um, is the code that I've just shown um, on the slide. And I can run the com ah, let me uh, first show you. So I have a small Lozure program. And here you can see it's using defun instead of defn. Um, just a small hello world. And if I pass this now into our um, compiler. Um, it writes it out to the closure file. And you, s you see here it has replaced the uh, defun with defn. And now we can just run it with um, closure. Cool, so that's the first step. But our goal is to have a self-hosted um, closure compiler. So what do we do? We rewrite our existing compiler that's written in Clojure and Lozure. And in this case, it's very straightforward because the only thing that we need to do is um, in our, if you look at the code here, I've used defn. Um, so the only thing that we need to do is um, replace that defn with, um, oh, sorry, with um, defun. And I've already done this. so. This is now my uh, Lozure compiler. And you see here, it's using the fun instead of the fn. And what I do now is I use my Clojure compiler, pass it as input my Lozure compiler, and then get the first version out. Um, and let's have a look at it. Yeah, um, it's not as pretty printed anymore as it was before, but you can see it's replaced defun with defn. And now we can use this um, first version. <coughs> uh, let me remove the out file. We can use this first version to, same as before, um, compile our small Lozier example. And um, run it. Cool. Um, so now that we have a better example about the basics of bootstrapping, how was it done for ClojureScript? Um, so ClojureScript, um, the first compiler, um, was written in Clojure. It still is written in Clojure. Um, and the cool thing is that Clojure and ClojureScript are basically the same language apart from a few differences, for example, the platform they run on, run on, so 
Java instead of JavaScript, but the syntax is the same, and if you're able to write closure, it's very likely that you're also able to write closure script. So that's already a big, dis a big advantage here compared to other um, projects, for example, with um, Go, where they had to take the compiler from which is written in C and had to switch from a completely different language and um, port it from C to Go. And then the other cool thing that enabled self-hosted closure script is that in 2015, um, with closure 1.7, reader conditionals were introduced. So for those of you who are not familiar with reader co conditionals, it gives you the option to use the same code base um, to run on different platforms. So here in this example, if this small snippet is um, compiled with Clojure, the reader will only take the um, Java interop expression but skip the other <coughs> expression for the JavaScript interop and the other way around. So if this one, if this snippet is compiled with a ClojureScript compiler, then it will ignore the Java interop and instead use um, the second expression. So giving, given these two things, Clojure and ClojureScript being already very sim similar and um, reader conditionals, then in um, 2005, um, David Nolan, who is the lead maintainer of ClojureScript, got to work and conditionalized the compiler, which means the goal was never to get rid of closure, but it was just to add on um, the possibility to run the compiler um, from JavaScript um, and to pull it into your closure script files, um, which is different, as I said, from other projects. So here, for example, it's quite interesting to just look at the Git history. Um, and I found this comment very fitting. Conditionalized portions of compiler, it's just <laughs> very descriptive of what basically happened. And, and here, for example, you see he conditionalized um, require statements which are different um, compared, uh, which are different in closure and closure script. Um, yeah, so this huge um, effort that he undertook now lets you pull in the compiler into your closure script um, source code and mainly through the CLJS JS namespace. So that's the main entry point into your um, compiler from closure script. Um, so here in this small example, um, we create an empty um, compiler state and then the function eval string takes the compiler state, then takes the uh, closure script expression, um, then a symbol or a string which is being used for source maps generation and then also an options map. Um, in this case, we specify which JavaScript evaluation function we want to use. And then the last bit, the anonymous function, is our callback um, that is receiving the final evaluation result. And um, you can actually just try it out, um, or we can try it out together. So I'm using Lumo here. and. Um, requiring the CLJS JS namespace, as we've seen before. Creating the empty state. And then this is the example that was also on the slide, evil string, and it returns the result of the closure script expression. There are also other cool functions which give you um, like a view into the compiler. For example, there's also compile string, which gives you the um, compiled JavaScript or the JavaScript that the compiler produced. Yeah. So it's not taking a lot to try this out and, and um, play around with this. So now, yeah, that was the demo. Um, so now we've talked about the what, how, but why. Like why, why do we want um, a self-hosted compiler? And the first three points are a bit more general. They don't necessarily apply to ClojureScript. Um, but so in general, it's if you start out designing a language, um, writing a compiler in that language is already a pretty good test for that language. It should give you already a good sense um, if you have all the pieces that you need, if anything is missing, because a compiler is not necessarily a trivial um, piece of code unless you write a compiler for Lojure. Um, then 
it's also good for the community. So imagine that you're working in your favorite programming language and you notice there is a bug in the compiler and you want to help out the maintainers and submit a patch, but then you look at the code and it's in a totally different language that you have no idea about and honestly don't have time to learn. Um, so at the end, you just don't bother to submit that patch, which yeah, is um, not ideal, um, which again was different for ClojureScript because it already was written in Clojure, so people um, um, could already understand the Clojure script compiler. And then also, if you can um, eliminate any dependencies or any, any other ecosystem your compiler dep depends on, that's also a bonus. But particular for ClojureScript, it was, the goal was never to eliminate um, Java as a platform, but instead just increase the reach even further. Um, so also, um, yeah, so increase the platform that the compiler can run on. For example, um, here I can, so I've um, integrated um, Bootstrap Closure Script into my um, presentation tool and can now um, execute small code snippets um, from my presentation without involving Java, just with JavaScript. And this is pretty cool if you think of it um, for people uh, learning Clojure so that you can have um, this environment in a browser and can play around with it, evaluate it without bothering people to, I don't know, start up a command line if they don't even know what a command line is yet. Um, and then, yeah, so there are lots of cool tools which um, make use of it. One, for example, is um, Replete, which is maintained by Mike Fikes, who is a Closure Script compiler contributor, and he, um, with Replete, he gives you a REPL on your mobile phone, which is very handy. Um, then there's Clips, which is a bit similar to what I've shown you on the last slide. It lets you integrate um, s interactive code snippets into your tech block um, and lets you evaluate them in there. And then Lumo, another Closure Script environment, I've used this for my a demo earlier, which um, is utili utilizing V8 and um, it's running on Node, so no Java involved, and they all use um, the bootstrapped compiler. And I recommend if you are interested in it, it's a good starting point to, all these tools are open source, so you can just look at the source code. Um, um, and yeah, if you're interested in starting or playing around with it, then looking at the source code, code is, in a good app, is a good option, and then also the um, CLJS JS namespace is also pretty well documented. Cool, and um, that's it. A uh, special thanks to uh, Fabrizio who um, made my slides look pretty. <laughs> And also I've learned that, or I've heard before, that it's a, just a law of nature that every list becomes self-hosted eventually. <laughs> <laughs> Question from the audience. I'm wondering about the size of the compiler. If I take my ClojureScript compiler, compile it down to JavaScript, yeah. how much JavaScript do I end up with? And also, if I want to then load it into V8 and compile some Closure Script, how much RAM do I need, more or less? Yeah, I, honestly, I don't have the exact numbers for you. Um, but it, um, I remember that I read that it's not, it's a lot bigger if you integrate it, um, the, the Bootstrap compiler, so it's not in the kilobytes, but more in the megabytes. Yeah. So one interesting problem um, <coughs> that I can imagine going from ClojureScript into JavaScript is the difference in data types. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm wondering, since you're programming uh, the compiler in ClojureScript, how did you create a representation, for example, of lists going into arrays? Um, of lists going into arrays. Um, I don't know, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I would need to look it up. No, ping you about it later. Yeah, OK. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry, I haven't done any um, active um, working on the compiler recently, so I, I don't know. So um, I know that there's some 
problems with macros in the yeah. in the self-hosting environment? Do you know of any plans if that changes in the near future? I don't know. No, I don't. I don't have any plans um, because I'm not actively yeah, working yeah, on it. I know, um, know of any plans. Yeah, but um, the I don't think they can be used um, because if if you write macros and like not self-host a closure script, you need to write them in closure because they are resolved during the closure compilation step. So I don't think that you can write them with self-hosted closure script. Uh, how does uh, the Google closure, closure with an S compiler come into the picture? Did you use it in the demo? I didn't use it in the demo. Um, I remember that um, it, so it required Java for the optimization. Um, so Google Closure is used to optimize the resulting JavaScript code. Um, but there was also an effort to um, port that to JavaScript. So it, it, I think it can be used with um, self-hosted Closure script as well, as well. But I haven't used it in this example. I like the closing note, kind of. I heard there's a problem with macros. Um, <laughs> let's stand as it is. Thank you again. Uh, we're going to meet again at 6.45. And another round of applause, please.